The state television company Westerner Minya represents the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sides of Westerner Minya, Marta Gert Hospital has resumed receiving patients with the support of Russian peacekeepers. Artsakh President's Office launches a hotline. Ambassador, Netherlands recognizes all Armenians detained in Azerbaijan as prisoners of war. Who does Turkish neo autonomies and neo pan Turkeys serve too? Pope Francis visits Armenian and Syrian churches in Iraq. The film Women of 1915 about the genocide against Armenians has been released on Amazon. Yerevan History Museum Snowdrops, heralds of spring, are beginning to bloom as it gets warmer in Mush, western Armenia. The blossoming snowdrops, which painted the Mush Valley with white, are now in the center of attention of locals and photographers. 120,000 people visited Pnarbash village of Kastamonu, western Armenia, last year. The latter has a population of 2,500 and is famous for its gorges, caves and waterfalls. The Valai Canyon is located in Pnarbash, which is considered as the second deepest gorge in the world. The Horna Canyon, with a wooden platform stretching 3 kilometers from one end to the other, the Elija Waterfall, known as a natural wonder of the region, and the El Garini Cave, which is the fourth largest cave in the world. The area attracts many visitors with its beautiful nature, despite the coronavirus epidemic. The deminers of the Russian peacekeeping contingent continue searches for explosive objects in socially significant facilities, private homes and infrastructure in Artsakh. As reported by Arman Press, the Russian Ministry of Defense reported, the hospital in Marta Gert is now receiving patients with the support of Russian peacekeepers, and the educational process has been resumed in schools. The office of the President of Artsakh Republic has launched a hotline to make communication with citizens and visitors to Artsakh more effective and to respond more effectively to their questions, suggestions, requirements and complaints. The hotline will provide services in Armenian, English and Russian. The hotline can be called with various questions, suggestions and complaints related to government programs activities and omissions of bodies and officials, in response to which the trained staff of the President of the Republic of Artsakh will provide information and advice on how to respond. The hotline can be reached in Artsakh by dialing 119, whereas in Armenia and abroad by dialing plus 374-47119-119. Working hours of this hotline are Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. The Dutch government considers all captive Armenians who are held by Azerbaijan as prisoners of war. The ambassador of the Netherlands to Armenia, Nico Shermers, told Armen Press, all Armenians held in Azerbaijan are recognized by the Netherlands as prisoners of war. The Netherlands has a very small role in the issue of Nagorno-Karabakh conflict settlement and we are making our efforts through Brussels or the OSCE Minsk Group format, the ambassador said. Also, the Dutch ambassador to Armenia expressed hope that a lasting solution to the conflict will be found. Meanwhile, Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev refuses to honor the commitments assumed in the tripartite statement of November 9, 2020 to return Armenian prisoners of war. He stated that Azerbaijan has returned all captives to Armenia, whereas only criminals still remain in their custody. We present to you the article by Stanislav Tarasov from the Regnum website. The ideologies of neo ottomanism and neo pan turkism which are imported to Turkey, are undermining it. Ankara may no longer be the leader of the pan turkic space. The words of Kemal Atatürk, the ideologist of secular Turkey, perhaps now sound true. We must retreat now to save Turkey for future revival and attack. Turkey's active participation in the Karabakh war, victorious for Azerbaijan, has dramatically increased the interest of experts and publicists in Ankara's foreign policy doctrines, which they label with two terms, neo ottomanism and neo pan turkism They are often put in the same information row, separated by commas for obvious reasons. Proponents of each of the two ideologies try for the same thing, the creation of a great Turkey, and some argue that Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan is in practice implementing a policy of synthesis of these two directions, his wars in Iraq, Syria and Libya, and attempts to start a military conflict with Greece are considered as a manifestation of neo-Ottomanism, 
restoring Ankara's influence within the borders of the former Ottoman Empire. The 1974 military action of Cyprus, like its involvement in the recent Karabakh War, are qualified as a result of the successful use of the doctrine of neo-pan-Turkism. Ankara is also looking at Iran, which is home to around 20 million ethnic Azeris. The full article is available on our website. Pope Francis visited an Armenian church that was destroyed in Mosul, Iraq. Vatican correspondent Ines San Martini wrote on her Twitter page. Before leaving Mosul, Pope Francis made a private visit to the destroyed Syriac Orthodox and the Armenian churches. San Martini wrote on Twitter page and attached photos. Let us remind that Pope Francis' visit to Iraq began on 5 of March. He was the first head of the Roman Catholic Church to visit the Middle Eastern country. His papal visit to Iraq ended yesterday on 8 of March. Ermenoid Productions announced that its 2016 multi-award winning Women of 1915 feature length documentary film is slated to stream on Amazon Video in observance of International Women's Day on March 8. This was reported by Zartong Media via Panorama.am. This documentary reveals that it was women who were left behind to experience the worst kind of torture and the most heroic form of resilience during the genocide against the Armenians. The film presents the stories of these women. One of the women profiled in our film is Victoria Artinian, who having survived the genocide against the Armenians and the Great Fire of Smyrna in 1922, migrated to United States. From the ashes of death and destruction in her homeland, she succeeded in overcoming these impossible traumatic events to live the American dream. Amazingly, she also helped raise her daughter's adopted son Steve Jobs, who changed the world, said four-time Emmy Award-winning documentary filmmaker Bared Maronyan. Additionally, Women of 1915 combines facts and emotions to honor the brave American and European women, including Diana Abgar and Danish missionary Maria Jacobson. On Western Armenia TV, Angela Terian, head of the Department of Ancient and Medieval History at the Yerevan History Museum, presented the history of Yerevan in the Middle Ages and the origin of the name Yerevan, cultural traditions, rituals, the early medieval architecture of Yerevan and other facts. She referred to excavations carried out at different times and findings from different parts of Yerevan. She demonstrated the archaeological objects stored in the museum, which proved that Yerevan is one of the oldest cities in the world. Now we present you Hoda Lojan by Vararak and Choir of Artsakh. <laughs> The full version is available on the official website of Western Armenia TV. This was all for today. Goodbye.